Blushtube, it's Lindsay and welcome back to Blushing Pink Stitches. Today is Monday the 8th of January and this is Flosstube number 44. Um, so I want to say welcome back to all of my returning subscribers. Thank you so much for coming back to watch me. Um, and if you're new here and I have had some new subscribers, um, probably due to whip parade season, that's how, you know, I've picked up um, a few more subscribers in the past. Um, so if you are here because you watch my whip parade, then I hope you enjoy um, my other videos and that you stick around. Um, so I have got back from dropping off Bella at preschool. Today was her first day back or look, her first afternoon back. Um, it is currently snowing, although it has calmed down quite a lot now, um, but it started snowing about an hour ago and it is freezing out there. Well, it was one degree when I got in the car. Um, so yeah, I'm quite like, um, a little bit like, I don't know, like, do you know when you get in from being really cold and then you kind of have to thaw out a little bit? So, um, yeah, so I wanted to sit down and film um, a normal update video. I've got, I've only got two whips to show you, but I do have some other things that I wanted to discuss, like um, my plans for this year. And then I do have um, some haul to show you as well. Um, so let's just jump right in. Um, and before I, uh, but before I do jump in, I just wanted to say Happy New Year um, because I know everybody... Um, I wished everybody a happy new year on my whip parade. I filmed that on December the 31st, but it is now officially 2024. So um, happy new year. I hope you're all having a lovely 2024 so far. Um, and yeah, let's look at what I've been working on. So I'm going to show you my whip that I always show you. Um, so this is... Um, super size max color a stitching shelf the artwork is by Amy Stewart and um, it's chartered by Heaven and Earth Designs I've been working on this since August of 2022 um, I'm going to put a picture up on the screen of where I showed it to you last which is going to be the picture from my whip parade um, so where I was at the end of 2023 um, and I have worked on this for more than my usual 100 stitches a day so far. Um, I'm part of a couple of challenges, which I'll talk about later. And part of those challenges meant that I had to, well, I didn't have to, but I chose to um, use this particular project. So I have stitched on it a bit more than I would have done. So um, right now I am sitting at 82,813 stitches and I'm at 11.61%. So, let's pull this out and show you. So this is where we're at. So um, the details that are coming out most at the moment are these, um, I'm hoping that I'm showing you things and you're gonna be able to see. Yeah, sorry, I just, you know when you have one of those moments where I'm like, can I read things backwards? Because if I can read things backwards, you're reading things forwards. Um, okay, so yeah, this area here is um, coming out a bit more now. And I was sort of a bit a bit at first, because I don't really pay a lot of attention to the picture. I like to kind of surprise myself with what emerges. But I was sort of stitching this area here and thinking, what is this? Because this doesn't look like another book. These two are very clearly books. But what is this? So I had a little look at the mock-up and this is the start of this sort of middle section here with all of this sort of flamey stuff and the hourglass in the middle. So I said on my whip parade that I had reached the midway point of this shelf. It's sort of here. Um, so you can see that very clearly starting to emerge now. So I would say I'm I'm about halfway or just over halfway down the page now. Um, so yeah, that's where we're at with that one. Okay, so I do like to put things away. I've switched this over recently to a 11 by 17 Q-snap. Um, 
just to get rid of some of the bulkiness at the sides um, now that I'm sort of getting more into the middle and that seems to be working for me better. So that is that one, you can get rid of that now. And then I'm gonna show you my New Year new start. I don't know why that's sitting there. So I decided that for my New Year new start, I wanted to start um, Oriental Beauty. This is a design by Joan Elliott. I originally kitted this up using the, the Oriental book. I can't remember what it's called. And it isn't in my pile that I'm leaning my iPad on to film this. Um, there's an Oriental book that she has with lots of um, lots of those theme designs in. And I originally kitted up from that. And then just before I broke up for Christmas, I thought, well, I'm going to try and see whether I can um, whether I can photocopy the pages from the book or scan it in on Good Notes just to see because I find it easier to highlight. Um, off of good notes or you know and sometimes stitching out of a book can be a little bit cumbersome and I'd had a go at it and I, I just couldn't get it because it's obviously in a book you've got like some bits even though I was like pressing down on the photocopier you had like some bits where it was cutting bits of the pattern off so I decided right I'm going to order a copy of the pattern from pole stitches I ordered this from their Etsy shop. You can't, as far as I'm aware anyway, you can correct me if you know differently, but as far as I'm aware, you can't get PDF downloads of Joni Elliott patterns. So um, I went for a colour symbol copy just because I find it easier, most of the time anyway, to differentiate between the symbols when they're, they're also in colour. So I've got the colour copy. This only took um three or four days to arrive I think it was really quick in arriving um and then what I did was I I scanned a page in and I've put it on good notes so I can sort of read the pattern from there and I've also got a really big working copy that I've like sellotaped together so I know where because one of the things that I didn't like about this pattern was that there were no um shaded rows to show a crossover so when I'm flipping between one page of the pattern and another it's really hard for me to see whereabouts I am when I'm moving on to the next page and I'm somebody who doesn't like to stitch one page at a time because I don't like the idea of page lines so um I want to do some of the next page and some of the page underneath so I'm not getting those page lines Anyway, that's just me. So um, yeah, I made like a big working copy of the pattern and sellotaped it together so that I could see how it all fit together. Anyway, with that all said, so I started this on New Year's Day. I'm stitching this on a piece of 28 count linen from Coffee Craft, Coffee Craft Fabrics. I have to slow down a little bit. <laughs> um, I picked this up when I went for the November stitchy day um at the Essex Needles yeah the Essex Needles Sitchy Day in November and I thought the colour was perfect for this pattern and I stitched on it on New Year's Day and then I had to spend a bit of time going back to a stitching shelf and getting a certain number of stitches on that and then I went back to it when did I go back to it let's have a little little look and see Maybe I went back to it on Friday. Yeah, maybe on Friday. Yeah. Um, and I've been working on it ever since. So I'm still working on it today. I just haven't found that stopping point where I want to go, okay, I'm going to put it away now and work on something else. And I think that's fine. Like, I'm absolutely fine with that. Um, so this is where, oh, how am I going to show you this? This is where we're at. And maybe if I fold it like that. Yeah. So what I did was I started in the middle because I didn't have like an even amount of border. Like I normally like to have a three inch border on each side and I don't quite have that with this piece. This is a fat quarter. Um, so I was like, right, I'll start in the middle. So I have even borders um, all around. So I started um, down here somewhere, here. 
worked my way up to this like the shoulder of her dress so um where are we it's not her shoulder is it yeah it's her shoulder it, well this isn't that this is her shoulder like part of the back of her dress and then started working on this I mean what would you call that that I don't know like it's not a halo anyway like this circular pattern behind her um yeah so I I've worked up um to here and then this is sort of where the next page starts so what I did was I tried to fill in as much of I could as this without like looking at the crossover bits and then then I made my working copy of the pattern and taped it all together and then found how I could work across bring the circle down and work across these leaves so these leaves I did last night and then I finished filling in the lighter green this morning and then I just started to work on um these bits here like the sticky out bits I don't really know what they are um because I, I do want to start on her hair and her head I absolutely love this it's a pretty good representation of what the fabric looks like um actually so um yeah it's beautiful the colors are so lovely and I, I the other thing I was going to say was that I am stitching this using royal broidery threads from my shop so um these are the colors that I've used so far I can never get floss drops to look like really um neat and tidy like some people but anyway these are the colors that I've used so far and they're beautiful to stitch with I made my own floss drops using um a stitched version from someone in the Joan Elliott um Facebook group I messaged her and asked if it was okay um I'm not going to mention the lady's name on here but she she messaged me back basically and said it was absolutely fine um and we had a lovely conversation about stitching Joan Elliott patterns but yeah she had stitched this in the group quite a while ago now it was a number of years ago but her finish of it was beautiful so I just took a couple of screenshots um of her stitching and used it to make floss drops so um, those are the colours that I've used so far and then the other colours are in here the only thing I don't have is the chronic and that's something that I will say if you're kissing this up from the book the colours called for are slightly different in the book than what they are in here so for example the may because the book is older than the than this version of the pattern, presumably so, because the metallic thread that they call for in the book is DMC 5282, um, whereas they call for Krynik in here. So I still have to get the Krynik, and I had to make like a few adjustments to what colours I had, what raw embroidery colours I had. But um, I am so pleased with how it's coming out, and it's just so addictive to stitch because it's so beautiful yeah so I haven't done any of the back stitch yet I was tempted to start it on this side but then I thought I'd probably want to finish off these blossoms and like back stitch the blossoms before I get into yeah before yeah so finish off the blossoms before I get into some back stitch but um, I will be backstitching this as I go because I don't, it's just too big of a pattern to leave it to the end. So, yeah, that is that. I'm really, really enjoying it. Um, I think this will be the last day that I work on it because part of my plan for 2024, um, and we might as well move into talking about that now. Part of my plan for 2024 with a stitching shelf is on the days that I work, so I work on Tuesdays, Wednesdays and Thursdays, um, to just stitch on that. Um, and I decided that because, uh, for a couple of different reasons, reason number one is I'll obviously get more stitches in on it on that day, and that will um, increase my progress. But also, I find that I do less stitching on those days because, well, I'm not here during the day for a start, like so on my days off I would I try to get my hundred stitches done on a stitching shelf in the mornings so that I then have the rest of the day 
um, you know, those pockets of time to work on other things or something else, I should say. Um, so I don't have that time, not here during the day. And then when I do get home from work, um, you know, I have things to do in the evening, you know, play with Bella, cook dinner, you know, wind down, that sort of thing. Um, and so I have less stitchy time in the evening as well. And also I'm tired because, you know, you go from being at home to being at work. That's different, isn't it? So, um, so I thought, well, what's the point in switching between projects? Um, if I'm only going to get a little bit of progress on that second project, I might as well just stick with a stitching shelf and then, um, then I'm up in my numbers on that. So let's just stick that there for a second, pull that out, have a little bit of a drink. Okay, so let's talk 2024 plans. I, I said in my last regular floss tube, so the um, floss tube 43, that I didn't really have plans or goals for 2024. And that still remains mostly true. I don't want to make extensive plans. I don't want to give myself lots of goals to go for because... Um, and I, I've talked about this before, I know that I'm the kind of stitcher who likes to flip between things and likes to do my own thing. Um, so I, you know, if I have lots of goals that I've set for myself, I feel like I have to stitch on that or I have to stitch on that. And then it becomes less enjoyable and I shy away from those projects and I don't want to do that either. So I decided, no, I'm not going to do any of that. I'm going to keep it relatively simple this year. So, first of all, I bought myself a new planner. So, um, for those of you that have been following me for a while, I used this planner last year. This is a Busy Bee, um, like, diary. Um, and I have a flip through um, of this diary and how I used it for my um, stitching last year up on my channel. So, you can go and check that out. Um, I decided on a different planner this year. I was watching, oh God, what's her name? God, I can't even think of her channel now. Is it Kayla? Um, let's see if I can quickly find it. It's going to show me every channel but that one, isn't it? What about if I look in my history? Just have a quick look in my history. I won't keep you long. Okay, so her, ch her channel name is craft underscore addict with a K. And I think her name's Kayla. If, if if it's not Kayla, then I will put her name on the screen and I will link her channel down below. Anyway, um, I've been watching her channel for a while and she mentioned in one of her recent videos that she bought a happy planner. And I sort of had a vague idea of what happy planners were. I'd, I'd heard a couple of other people talking about them before, um, but she she showed how she was using it. And she said that because of this particular thing on the happy planner, you could sort of add things to it. Anyway, I quite liked that idea. So I bought one. I got this one. So I am I will link down below um, where I bought this off of Amazon. I'll link it down below. You can see the screen. It's a bit, it's a bit glary. I really liked the design of this one. So it says, um, now is the time on the front. And I really like the colour aesthetic. It, it kind of suits me. Anyway, it has this ring system. So this is one of the bigger ones. This has 11 rings. Most of the sort of standard happy planners have nine rings. Um, so they're sort of, you can see they're a bit shorter. And I don't know if they're narrower, but anyway, they're shorter. And then, then inside, you've got tabs with all of the months on. Now, this was an 18-month planner but um, that started in July of 23. But I didn't need that, so I took those sections out just to make it a bit lighter and a bit easier to work with. And because of this um, ring um, bit in the middle here, you can just um, 
lift pages out of here, but you can also put pages in as well. Um, I am happy to do a flip through of how I'm using this for my stitching, um, if you would like. So anyway, it, it's got some similar pages to um, what I've worked on before. So this is like um, where I'm writing, it's like a, a monthly spread where I'm writing down what I've stitched on every day, it's not up to date. And then my full coverage totals, I was doing that before. And then it has the um, like week to a view afterwards where I'm putting down like stitch counts and things like that. Um, but I've also got a section at the back with um, my plans. So I'm just gonna talk to you about those. So I am in the, um, Whip Warriors group on Facebook. It's a closed group right now. You can't um, re-enter, you can't ask to join the group again until November. They make it sort of a public group again in November um, at some point. Um, but lots of people have been talking about it and I did actually join it last year um, and was a bit overwhelmed by like exactly what I needed to do with things and like the amount of chat in some of the um, Facebook Messenger um, chats that I just sort of in the end thought, no, this isn't for me, I'll come out. Um, this year I entered it a bit earlier and that gave me time to really read what it was all about um, and give it a go. And there were some challenges that you could take part in for the road trip before um, before the end of the year. So that gave me sort of a bit of a flavour of what I thought of it. Now I am doing the road trip and I'm probably not going to do any of the other challenges in the group. They're doing a road trip around Australia this year. So basically you stitch your way around the country and shop at different, stop at different cross stitch shops and different um, at touristy destinations. Um, and it's it's just all about working on your whips basically and it's suiting me at the moment because I can choose whatever I like to work on and I can make it work depending on whether it's a, a project that I'm counting stitches on using Pattern Keeper or not. So for example I, I am using this, I'll just knock myself in the face then, because I can count hours rather than stitches so a hundred stitches is an hour um, and yeah, we're on a cruise at the moment from Seattle to Australia. And um, yeah, I'm just stitching my way through the activities basically and really enjoying it. And I think part of the appeal is that then I can go and do, you know, when we stop at different places, I can go and look at well, what's that actually like, or I've never heard of that island before or, you know, and that's great. Um, so I'm taking part in that. Um, and I'm also taking part in um, some full coverage fanatics challenges. They, I will link their Facebook group down below. They have um, year, they have year long challenges. They have monthly challenges. Um, and the two that I am taking part in this year, one of them is called the 2024 Epic Journey Challenge. So they have this um, PDF printout of all of the challenges on it. I believe one of them is missing. Somebody was saying one of them is missing. But basically, they are um, both fictional and real places um, that you can, like, stitch your way across. That doesn't really make any sense. Let me, let me give an example. So, for example, the Silk Road is 6,437 kilometres, and on here it's the same in stitches. So, um, and, and then you've got things like um, Route 66, but you've also got some fictional journeys. So um, you've got Treasure Island from England to the Caribbean. You've got um, Sam and Frodo's Travel to Mount Doom. Uh, what else is on here? The Canterbury Tales, Southwark to Canterbury. Um, you know, and lots of different... And some of them are massive and some of them are really short. Like the Canterbury one is 85 kilometres and that's 85 stitches. So that's really easy to get done. Whereas, let me see whether I can find the biggest one on here. No, that's nine. Nine, seven. Is that the biggest one? Yeah. So the biggest one on here 
is travel across Bro Brogdingnab. I don't know where that what that is, so I'm going to have to look that up. And that's 9,700 kilometres, which is insane. So that will take me a while to do. So what I've been what I plan on doing with this is at different points in the year, um, and I met and I have tried to coincide it with Whip Warriors is um, to use a stitching shelf to stitch these. And I've already done, and I haven't ticked it off of here yet, Aragon's Travels Across Allegatia, which was 1,609 stitches. So I had to do 1,500 stitches to get to Hawaii, I think, in the road trip or the, on the cruise. So I thought, oh, I'll just increase it by 109. So I've already ticked that one off. And um, so I'm definitely so I'm going to be doing that. And then I also want to take part in and I'm not sure how this is going to go, but we'll see. They have monthly themed events and you don't have to count for them. You just do. It's just, the idea is just to get some progress on a whip. So I could work on it for like one day or two days or whatever. And they have like these weeks every month of the year where there's a different challenge. So, for example, January, it's the 14th or the 20th. And it's nicely new. Work on your newest start or, so, or start something new. Um, July, for example, is finish line focus. Work on your project closest to a finish. And I thought those were quiet because there's they're like low pressure. There's no like stitch count involved in them. There's no, um, you know, hours to do or whatever. So they're they're low pressure, um, and they give me an opportunity to get out some of my whips that. I perhaps wouldn't have thought of working on um so yeah I'm happy to do let me know if you would like me to do a flip through of my planner and how I'm using it I did buy um you can buy some extra like note paper that you can insert in it and um, so I got some of that as well and I'm really liking that so one of the things that I don't always like about physical planners is like the idea of like if I want to rip something out, well, I, then I kind of feel like I've ruined it. Or, you know, like I don't like making a mess of my planner in terms of doing lots of crossing out and things like that. So, um, yeah, anyway, there's that. Um, so that's kind of my plan. And then after that, I'm just I'm just all about stitching on what I want when I want. So if I want to do more starts, I will. If I just want to work on a whip for, you know, two weeks, then I will. You know, I at the back of my mind, I'm kind of like, oh, well, you know, when I come to film a Flosh G video, maybe that's kind of boring. But maybe that will mean that there's a little bit of a longer time in between me filming videos. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Or maybe it means that I'll just show other things in that video. Uh, we'll see. So. Let's get to the haul because I have a box of haul and actually I have moved some things around. So I, I did have some fabric in here and on Friday I did some matching fabric with patterns and so I've taken some stuff out of here and I have no idea where it is now. So I got some fabric like um, I got the December fabric of the month from Spa, from um, Fabrics by Crafty Kate and I also got the November and December fabric of the month from Kate at Sparkly's and I think they're somewhere I don't know anyway um okay let's just go through this hoping uh this is everything anyway so first up is a kit by Lenart or Lenarte I don't know anyway the reason I bought this, this has been on my Amazon wish list for quite a while. I'd seen a few people stitch it on Instagram um, and I really loved the way that it came out. And then it was a ridiculously cheap price. Like, you know, when you scroll through your wish list and it says, oh, this item has dropped by this much. Um, this was really quite cheap. I don't know if it still is, but um, this is um, African Woman. Um, it's one of their culture cross stitch collection kits so this is what it looks like she's just stunning I just love the colors and she's amazing so um I think also part of the collection is um Buddha which I have also got god there there are that one there is really lovely as well isn't it wow and that one okay anyway 
Um, so this comes with um, all the DMC that you need. It is DMC. And then the fabric, it doesn't say, oh, it's 25, 27 count. Is that right? 27 count fabric. I don't know. It does look like even weave actually, so it might be. And I think it's just from up here, it looks like it's slightly printed. So yeah, anyway, I couldn't pass it up just because it was such a good price and I always thought like it was silly not to get it. So there's that. Oh, I put the teddy pattern. Or oh, have I? Is it here somewhere? Oh no. Okay, I won a giveaway from um, Judy. Um, her channel is an Aussie in a Kiwi world. She bought like four copies of this pattern and was giving the other three away basically. So this is um, Teddy Bear Reunion. It's a leisure arts pattern by Heartprint Inc. Yeah. I thought I might be cute for like a baby. Uh, there's a lot of stitch in there. But I think we're going to do it as a stitch along. And again, like I don't have need to have like an end point in mind. So it, you know, part of the appeal for stitching for me is just the process. I just like the process. So, um, yeah, she sent that. And then at the same time, she was so generous to send, also send me. Oh, I forgot those bits were in there. Um, a New Zealand landscapes calendar for 2024. So I'm going to have this up in my craft room. Look at all the stunning pictures that are in the calendar. That was so nice of her. So thank you very much, Dee I really, really appreciate that. Um, I was part of the Coffee Craft um, Christmas card exchange this year. And somebody, and I've, I didn't write down who it was, but somebody also sent some goodies in their card. And I got this little snowman button kit. I've never seen anything like this before. It's really cute. And then somebody also sent a, um, a variegated DMC floss. Like a Christmassy one. So that was really nice. Um, from my friend Susie. I can call her my friend. I think I can call her my friend. Anyway, I know her from the Essex Needles retreats. Um, she was de-stashing this on Facebook. And I had put it on my wish list quite recently, actually. And so snapped it up. This is the candy cane um, Santa stocking from Dimensions. I've been thinking about getting a stocking for a while. I definitely want to stitch one for Bella. Um, and I really like this one. I've got a few others on my wish list that I, I like the look of. I don't like all of the Dimensions um, stockings, but I do like this one. And it comes with... 16 count dove great ada you've got all of the threads and then you can see here that there are what look like sequiny or like sequins for the snowflakes yeah you can see them scattered around here so that's really cool that will be a big project to start um oh i didn't i put a finish in here and i haven't shown it to you um so i started this in december at some point and then I finished it a couple of days later. This is Berries in Bloom by Hands On Designs. It's a free design on her website. So I will leave a link to it down below. I stitched it on a, I think this is 16 count blue Ada using all the called for colours. And I finished it. What should I put behind it? There you go. It's lovely. It was so easy to stitch and I really like the effect of these long stitches. So, um, and then you've got like the little X's on the berries that are over two. It's two over two on here. So it really, it really makes it stand out. I think it's so cute. Um, I think I first saw Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch. She stitched this a couple of years ago. And I downloaded it and I've had it kitted up for ages and I thought I'm just going to start it in December. And like I said, a couple of days later it was done. So yeah, I feel like I do things in the wrong order. Anyway, um, my thought with that one was to like get like a Christmas box, mount that on some um, 
like sticky board, put it on the front of the Christmas box and then put lots of baubles in the top as like a decoration. That was my idea. I just knocked my elbow as well. Um, I was also part of the Coffee Craft Fabrics um, gift exchange. Um, and you had to stitch, well, you didn't have to. I think it was, I thought it was one of the requirements. Anyway, um, you had to stitch a small for somebody and then also put things in the package up to a value of or around a value of 30 pounds um and then when you when you signed up if you wanted like if someone was to buy you fabric you could sort of specify what count you wanted and things like that so anyway um i got my parcel and i don't have everything here because for example the fabric i've put in a project now i can't remember where that is but this person stitched me this it's a little coaster of a robin how cute is that? It looks like it's done on sort of like a green piece of Ada. And he is so adorable. Or she, I don't know, maybe it's a she Robin. With a little Santa hat. And so this is sat in my craft room and that's, I'm using that as a coaster. Because even though it's not Christmas, why not? Um, and there were some other things in here. Um... So I don't have everything here that I had before, but she included, or he, I don't know who it is, um, a really lovely couple of needle minders, a moon and a star. They're stunning. So that's from somebody called Kate Blandford. Not heard of her before. They're lovely though. Um, she sent me some scissors in a case. So I really like those. Um, a set of John James embroidery needles that was really lovely um another skein of that uh variegated dmc so now i have two so i could probably you know it's great to have more than one just in case you need more than one for a project um one of these travel pairs of scissors that i've been selling in my shop um but in a different color I don't have the blue so that's always handy to have um, and what was in here? Well, this was a little, like a little stamped project. So I don't know whether you're going to be able to see this. So it says, um, the magic is calling. And then she included like some DMC on a little ring and then the hoop. So I put, and you can see the needle here. So I believe you just sort of stitch round the motifs, like embroidery and then put the hoop on it afterwards. And then that's like a really cute little finish. Like, I love that idea. I think that's so lovely. There were some chocolates in the passage, passage? There were some chocolates in the package, which, you know, I ate very quickly. I think there were, there was a little game of like Santa banter, which is away now with the Christmas stuff. And like I said, the fabric, it was like a 14 count, like sparkly gold aging which is lovely so thank you very much to whoever that was <laughs> um okay what else have i got in here um i did a one two three stitch order because there were some there was a couple of patterns i wanted there were some bits of chronic that i wanted and some beads Oh no, it was fancy floss, I think. That's all away in projects now. I'm not going to bother showing you that. But I mainly did the order because they had this in stock. It's the Mill Hill Buttons and Beads Honeybee Kit. And I've been looking for this for a while. And you know, when Mill, when they get Mill Hill stuff back in stock, I just have to order it. So um, there's a couple of like the coffee range ones that I really want. Like the latte that sort of range I, I don't know whether you know what i mean and also there's like a monarch butterfly that i really want as well but i've wanted the honeybee for a while so i mainly did the order for that so i got that and then at the same time i got this pattern Let's see if i can find it this is a holiday main street by ursula michael 
it reminds me a lot of the Stony Creek in the village patterns but this is a Christmassy one and it's obviously got a bit of a different style to it but I really liked it so I decided to get that um then I signed up to the Patchwork Rabbit um auto ship for the Fabulous Houses by Cottage Garden Samplings um and I got um the Santa's house one and then I bought the DMC to go with it but the trouble is that the classic colour works that you need they're like out of stock everywhere <laughs> so I'm having to wait for those to come back in stock somewhere but, you know, I've got plenty of other things to stitch. Um, my sister bought me... This is the only stitchy thing I got for Christmas this year. I was really good in terms of, you know, I've got loads of stuff. And I I really... I wanted to focus on other things for Christmas, basically. But she bought me this kit. This is a kit by Luca S. And I think Alyssa from eCrafting in Colorado, I believe... She's got this kit and she started it and I really liked it. Anyway, it's called The King of Flowers. I just love the colours. The colours are amazing. So, skill level three. It's just got four crosses in it. But it looks to me like it's completely full coverage. You can see up here all of this is stitched. But it's not even got backstitch in it. It's just full cross. So it comes with, what does it say on here, Ada, maybe 16 count? Yeah. I think, I think it's 16 count. It looks like 16 count to me. And then it comes with, um, I think Luca S colours. Yeah. These are the colours. It sort of implies that here. Luca S do do their own threads. You can buy them on um, in the UK from Hobby Jobby. Never tried them before. Might do in the future. Like, do like a DMC comparison. Not sure. So yeah, I got that. Thank you very much for my sister. Um, on D Stash on eBay, I got this old Dimensions kit called Bluebirds of Happiness. I love it. Love everything with birds on it. It's really cute. Um, this is the sort of kit where the picture on the front is not going to do it any kind of justice. Um, and it, yeah, it's really you can tell it's old, can't you? As it comes with um, fourteen count ivory Ada and then all the threads. Um, I got the last in the um, beach boardwalk series from Peakside. So this is uh, this is snack shop. So yeah, now I need to find a piece of fabric to stitch all of those on. Another Facebook D stash thing was I've been looking for this Disney cross stitch book. It's the Christmas edition. They do have so this was um Disney were doing a cross stitch subscription thing where you got like a magazine every month and then every now and again they do like a special book but you could only buy the book if you were a subscriber. So um, I saw somebody doing, I'll show you, I don't want to show you that pattern, this project here on Instagram and I absolutely loved it. So I asked where did they get it from and they said from this book. So when I saw somebody de-stashing um, Disney cross-stitch books on Facebook, I immediately thought, I need that. And there are other things. You can see I've tabbed it here. Um, so I got that. Another Facebook de-stash. Where's that other pattern gone? Oh, it's down here. A lady was selling lots of um, soda stitch patterns. Um, and I, I wanted these two and she accidentally sent me one that I didn't need but said I could keep it. Um, this is a little witch of the night. And then a little wizard of the night. I thought they were really cute. Be great Halloween projects to do. And then you can either put the numbers or you can put happy Halloween. So it gives you the option like down here 
on in this picture here there's happy halloween so that's charted for you as well and it's the same on the other one so um and then the one that she sent me by mistake was this one called little witches so i have a think about whether i want to do this one or whether i'm going to just give this away we'll see it's quite cute and um, so i got those ones the last facebook d sash thing was this book by ursula michael again it's called cross stitch by the sea and i mainly bought it because and the person who was de-sashing it didn't show any of the inside and I couldn't find like any of the inside um, on the internet. But I really like this cover image and I have had a flick through and there are a couple of other things I might stitch in here, but I mainly bought it for that image. So if I show you. It's this one here. It's really lovely. I love all of like the like the this bit round here, I'm not really sure, like the balcony and the balust balustrade, is that what how you would say it? There are some other patterns where you can make other lighthouses to go in this cube or like, you know, however you want to finish them. But I really liked that. So I bought it for that reason basically. Um and then the only other stuff that I have left is stuff that I've bought like um E patterns pdf patterns so um the shop that was selling this was having a sale this is um mandala duck by awesome pattern studio i love all of their mandala patterns and i've been looking at the duck one for a while for obvious reasons um this would look great on a piece of blue fabric so i finally got that then from the Etsy shop X Free Stitch, I got um, Winter Night. When she, I saw her release this on her Instagram or like talk about it on her Instagram, and then it took me a few days to be able to find it on the shop because you wasn't there first of all. I just love that scene; it's gorgeous. So I got that. Um, this was from somebody on Instagram, it was a designer on Instagram, and I don't know her name, I will link her Instagram down below, this is called Christmas Express, it's just gorgeous, so um, I bought that from her through Instagram Messenger, um, I paid her via PayPal. Um, so yeah. It does say here, designer for Reek. So. Some of it is in English. So I got that. And then there was a, oh, this was the other one. Um, this is called Holiday Walk. This is from... Again, a designer that I don't know the name of. Stitch Heart? Is that the name of the designer? Yes, Stitch Heart. It's a, of a little cute little elf on a holiday walk. <laughs> He's so cute. Yeah, so I'll, I, again, I'll put a link down to everything in the description box. And then there was a shop on... Um, and I've put one of them away, haven't I? Anyway, I'll put it up on the screen. There was a shop on Boosty that was having a 50% off pattern sale and, and the designer's name is Ekaterina Volkova. And again, I will put a link to her Boosty shop down below. Um, one of the ones I bought off of her was um, a pattern called Little Dreamers. Um, and I'd been looking at this pattern for a little while on, um, you can buy it on mybobbin.com. Um, but hadn't done it. And then when she was having this 50% off sale, I thought, well, I'm, I'm going to have to actually was that from her because this one is not from her because this is from anna anyway no, okay so the, okay so little dreamers is from anna altkit skya she was having some sort of a sale on her beastie shop so i bought little dreamers apologies sorry and then i also bought um fragrant lily lilac i saw um laura from i stitch birds I don't know whether she bought this one or like a similar one, but I just love the colours. 
beautiful. So I got that. And then Ekaterina Volkova was having a 50% off sale. So she, Laura showed these bee patterns that she was doing. Um, and I loved them. And um, so when she was having the 50% off sale, I just bought all of them. And I don't have one of them here because it's packed away in a project bag. So one of them is called Sweet Nectar. And these are only 60 by 60. They're full coverage, but they're just 60 by 60 with a bit of backstitch. I just love them. This is called uh, Bees and Anemone. This one's called Bee Duet. This one's called Bumblebee. And this one is called Hunting for Honey. So yeah, I just really like those. So I've put one in a project bag with them, some 28 count even weave. And I'm was sort of umming and ahhing about whether to do it over one or two. If you do it over one, it's going to be tiny. So I am going to do it over two. Um, and I'm really excited to start that at some point. So I think that is everything. I, I thought this was going to be a relatively short video and then it turns into 50 minutes. So I don't know, I'm just like talking to you guys <laughs> um yeah uh next saturday is the january essex needles stitchy day um so i'm really looking forward to going to that with my friend becky um i have got another thread order on the way like a stock update of royal broidery so um Thank you for those of you that did pre-orders. You can do that anytime with me if you want to kit up a larger project because I don't have a massive, massive stock at the moment. Um, you can always do a pre-order with me. Um, that is on the way to me now. Um, and I think that's everything that I've got to say. Life update wise, we um, spent some time in between Christmas and New Year sort of doing some rearranging of the house. I think I already said that on my whip parade. We're back to work now. Bella went back to preschool today. She's doing an extra day at preschool um, from January. Um, so she currently does two afternoons and one mornings. One morning, that's what she did before Christmas. And now she's doing two afternoons, one morning and one full day. Um, so yeah, she'll be absolutely fine. She loves going to preschool. Um, she started going to a dance class on Saturday, so she did like a trial at this particular um, like theatre school. Um, really loved it, so um, she'll be going back next Saturday now. Um, so yeah, that would be lovely for her. Um, I yeah, I've got a few nice things coming up. Like I said, I'm going to my stitchy day on Saturday. I'm going out for a meal with some of my friends on Friday night to this really lovely Chinese restaurant in town and I don't often get to eat Chinese because um Stefan's allergic to it so um yeah I'm really looking forward to that <laughs> um yeah and just kind of cracking on with the new year really um I have got booked tonight a dance fitness class um I've been thinking about what to do with my fitness in the new year because, you know, it's always a time when people think about those things. And I think one of the things that I think about exercise is that I don't often enjoy it that much. And then it becomes a chore. So when I was younger, I went to a lot of dance classes, I went to this particular dance school. And then when I got a bit older, I went, my mum used to go to this dance class. And so I went with her. And I always really, really enjoyed it. And I thought, well, I'm going to try doing something like that just to see whether I get the enjoyment factor from it and therefore it isn't a chore. So we'll give it a go and see. Um, so yeah, anyway, I'm going to let you go because it's half past one. Um, I haven't had any lunch, so I'm going to go and grab some lunch and have half an hour um, sat down on the sofa and I will see you in two or three weeks time with another update um please leave me any comments questions anything like that down below um you know you can follow me on instagram my instagram account is blushing pink stitches my etsy shop is blushing pink stitches 
Um, yeah, so feel free to follow me on any of those. I am having a 10% off all of my digital patterns uh, January sale at the moment. So I'll leave a link to that down below. Um, you can buy any of my digital patterns for 10% off. Um, so yeah, feel free to use that. That's valid until Thursday. I think this video, I'm hoping it will go up relatively. I'm hoping it will go up tomorrow on Tuesday. So you still have a couple of days to use that coupon code. Um, yeah, and that's everything. So I'm going to love you and leave you. I hope you all have a wonderful couple of weeks and I will see you soon. Bye.